Welcome, welcome, welcome um, to the number one key to online dating success. Um, thanks for joining us to blab about this. It's a really important topic that we're going to talk about today. It so, is. quick introduction. I'm Bobby Palmer, um, the uh, founder of Date Like a Grown Up. My website's datelikeagrownup.com. Um, I'm a dating relationship coach for women over 40. And my friend, my dear friend and colleague is... <laughs> Sandy Wiener, and I am the founder of Last First Date. I'm also a dating coach for women over 40. And uh, my website's lastfirstdate.com. It's telling us that it's our first day on Blab, but it's not. But it's not. <laughs> so it's like my fifth Blab, I think. And Bobby and I have done a Blab together. That was fabulous. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, B. Frager, for saying welcome. Yes. And uh, yeah, so please uh, be interactive and write questions in the in the uh, in the sidebar. And uh, Bobby is going to kick us off. I am. I just want to say uh, one quick thing so, uh, about blabbing because Sandy and I have been blabbing for a couple of years now. <laughs> <laughs> we met each other uh, at a conference and um, I you know, we, you might think, well, you know, we're doing sort of the same thing and there might be some, I don't know, competition or something, but Sandy and I, uh, we are, we just like connected and we're just both really committed to helping you find, helping women um, after 40 find love. Like it's the best time to do it, um, but we have our unique challenges. So we're here to help you with uh, specifically with those unique challenges. Um, so, Again, the topic is um, the number one key to online dating success. And here's what I want to do. I want to ask you, um, our fellow blabbers, um, what you think it is. What do you think the number one key to online dating success is? What are your thoughts about it? If you could just give us a note, write us a comment. Sandy, you can give them the directions. Yeah, just write in the message section or in the question section what, what you, your thoughts are. Yeah, what do you think is the number one key to being successful when you're using online dating? We'll give you a minute because sometimes it's like... Huh? How do you do this? <laughs> yeah, and this is, like the great, this is why I love doing this, right? Because we do have interaction with you. Um, oh, Anne's here. Good. Teresa? Look at it as a way to get an introduction to new people. I love that. That's yeah. really good. Ooh, yeah. Smart. Yeah. That's really good. And actually, um, we are going to talk about that today. That's mm -hmm. anything else. Number one key to online dating success. I think some people would think have a good profile. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm, okay. All right. Well, Thank you for uh, Mira. Is that your name? Mira Wonder. That's nice. Um, all right. So here's the deal. We think the number one key to online dating, to being successful with online dating, and what that means is getting a bunch of dates with good guys. Um, we think it's knowing that it can be challenging. Um, it can be. It can be a challenging experience, but also knowing that you're in charge of it. Knowing it can be a challenging experience, but knowing that you're in charge of it. You can make it great or it can really suck. Um, it's your choice. So today, Sandy and I are gonna talk about some very specific things that you should, we think you should know and things you, sh you can do and not do also to take charge and really create a positive, successful experience for yourself. Um, and by that positive and successful, we mean joyful. It can be a fun experience. It doesn't have to be hellish. Um, and one that will lead you to lasting, fabulous, grown-up love. So, Sandy, talk to us a little bit about what is online dating and what it's not. Okay. Well, I want to also first say that uh, I am dating online, and Bobby is married. So, and I met my husband online. Oh, yeah, thanks. And yeah, yeah I met sure. my husband was online. Um, right. I was online on and off for like seven years. So I'm online now for about six years. So I have a lot of, we both have a lot of experience and we're just, we're a little bit in a different place right now right. in terms of online dating. So um, online dating is 
like Bobby just said. Oh my gosh, I just broke the cardinal <laughs> rule. I'm so sorry. Turn off the volume. Um, I'm turning it off. I'm so sorry. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Crazy. Ah, everything is ringing. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Alma. Alma. It won't stop. <laughs> I, I just. <sighs> well, what we learned in coaching school was that when you have outside noises like that and disturbances, you can make sense of them and weave them into the conversation. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to say that that, that bell. <laughs> that came in an unexpected way is kind of how you have to approach online dating that there are lots of things that can happen that are not what you may expect um so accept that there's a journey that it's part of part of, it's a process and it's a journey and it's about connecting and not dating so we have this term online dating but we're not actually dating online we're meeting people we're connecting with them so the purpose of online dating is to connect it's to connect with some good quality men it's also to weed out the ones that are not quality and how to really identify those people really quickly and move on. I had one of those last night and uh, got on the phone with a guy and um, it was really clear to me that we were not a good match and I let him know right away. So, you know, he had enough uh, of interest that I was willing to get on the phone with him. So this is what it is. It's a connection. I didn't actually date him. And so we're not getting to know people. We're not giving our whole life story online or on the phone, as this guy mistakenly did, <laughs> told me about everything. Oh. Um, so yeah, it's it's really not for that. The date, the dating is for getting to know somebody really well, and um, it's kind of. And Bobby, Bobby mentioned this to me that um, if you can think of dating online as a metaphor for going to a giant singles party with hundreds of thousands of men there, and you're not gonna get to know all of them, but you have so many choices. So you still need to show up the best way you can. You have to know who to pick, who to give your time to, and who to walk away from. That's right, and, um, and where else would you have the opportunity to meet potentially meet all these men or not meet, but even be able to make a connection. I mean, that's the great thing about online dating. Um, it's literally, I mean, and there's people that I know that have met and married guys that live like around the corner from them uh -huh. and they still wouldn't have met him if it wasn't for online dating. Larry lived in my community, but we probably wouldn't have connected. So that's, I love your example, Sandy, you, you emailed with him. There was enough interest to get on the phone. And that's all online dating is for is for you to make that connection, either get on the phone or get a date and or get a date. And the rest is about getting to know one another. Right. Right. Okay. I also, just before you go on and, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the emotional involvement and emotional readiness. I want to also acknowledge that there are some men on the call on the blab today. And um, so most of what we say applies to men or women. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about women in particular, a little bit further down, but I don't want to turn any of the men away. Um, so, um, yeah, so somebody's writing to us. Mm -hmm. Got it. Bobby, do you want to read that? Um, I am, and we're going to be talking about that later. Yes. Do you want, you want to read it out loud? No, or go ahead. Wanna... When, when okay. We'll get to it. Okay. All right, so Bobby's going to talk about how to get emotionally ready. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, so the thing about the idea about taking control, about knowing that it can be a challenge, but making it good for yourself, the first and most important thing is to really be emotionally ready to do it. Um, and like I say, do it like a grown up. Because as I know from my experience in Sandy too, it could, you could let the experience of online dating like crush you. You could let it, if you let it, it can make you feel crappy about yourself and, um, and about men. So let's just first and foremost, get the scary stuff just right out on the table. Let's talk about the scary stuff, okay? Um, and for those of you who've been online, you already know about this. There are losers and leavers and users. Um, there are guys that, are going to show up as one thing and 
turn out to be the next. Um, just like there's guys you'll meet anywhere else. I mean, they are out there. It's the truth. There's also scammers. Um, and if you are not yet online, I'm sure you've heard about it. These are the guys from other countries usually, but not always, who are out there and um, prey on women trying to get their money. So you just have to learn um, what they look like and how to spot them, which is really freaking easy. Um, you don't need to get upset about it. You don't need to look at your inbox and go, oh my God, he's a scammer and be afraid or let it emotionally affect you in any way. What you need to do is just say, oh, look, I'm so smart. I realize it's a scammer and delete. So there is the scary stuff, but you have a choice about whether you want to internalize it and whether you want to feel bad about it. Um, and just remember, they don't know, they have no idea who you are. So uh, the delete key is all you need to do. And another really important thing um, in terms of getting emotionally ready, and this is something I was challenged with for a long time, is not feeling rejected. So the truth of the matter is there's all kinds of ways through the online dating process that if you choose to, you can feel really bad about yourself. And actually we're gonna, Sandy's gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, there's no such thing as online rejection. There's no such thing as online rejection. And the reason I say that is because you do not know these men and these men do not know you. This is really important. If a man doesn't respond to you the way you would like him to, you are not being rejected. He is not saying, I know you and I don't pick you. So remember that because it really is just part of the process. It's like Sandy said, this is just a process and it's a way to connect with men. And what you wanna do is you wanna connect with as many of the right men as possible and one will be your, your one. And so these, these guys that don't show up for you or don't choose you, it's just because it could be because they don't like somebody with brown hair or the religion may be different or they're really busy or they met somebody else or their dog died or they got this great contract and they had to move to Botswana. There are a thousand reasons why he's not getting back to you or he's not contacting you. Just remember, there's no such thing as online rejection. These men don't know you. They can't reject you, okay? And really quickly, a friend of mine talked about rejection by photo is what she called it. She's really nervous about putting her photo out because men aren't going to pick her because she's not, you know, this kind of ideal looking woman. For you women, I want you to know, and for men too, um, there is no ideal. And there, I want you to know the reality that there's, oh, I got love. I like that. Um, <laughs> There is a reality. There's there's people are attracted to all different things. I am not like skinny girl. I am not tall, skinny, blonde girl. Um, and my husband doesn't like tall, skinny, blonde girls. So it's really important for you to put your best foot forward, get your best photos out there, do them professionally. It's the, my biggest tip, you know, when it comes to photos. And just know that you will try, if you're being real and showing who you are in your photos and your profile, you'll attract the right man. And um, there's just all kinds of men like all kinds of women. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there. And one other thing, men, it's only in the movies. <laughs> men aren't looking for you know, the ideal woman. They're not looking for Christy Brinkley. They're not looking for Halle Berry. Would they take them if they had the chance? Hell yeah. But when they're online, especially grown up men, they're realistic. And they're gonna look at your picture. They're gonna look and see, does she look friendly? Does she look happy? Does she look confident? That's what they're looking for. So just put yourself out there and be really proud of who you are. And lastly, when you talk about the emotional part, kindness. Kindness is so important. When you're using online dating to make these connections, kindness to yourself and kindness to the men is of the utmost importance. Um, it's my third principle in dating like a grown up. Um, principle one is balance your head and heart. Principle two, principle, <laughs> principle one is balance your head and heart. Principle two is showing kindness to yourself and the men you meet. And principle three is taking responsibility for your outcomes and actions. So 
showing kindness to yourself, giving yourself a break. If you write a silly email or a stupid email, giving yourself a break. If you say something you think you shouldn't say. And really understanding that the men behind the screen are human beings and people just like you with feelings and with experiences and showing them kindness and being willing to show them empathy is really important. It's going to make your experience so much more pleasant and you're going to connect with better men. So be emotionally ready. So agree with that. And I, I, I run a group on Facebook called your last first date, which everybody is welcome to join. And the discussions on there are often about judging men for the things that they do and don't do. And, and there's so many assumptions made about what a man means and why he's saying what he's saying, and then writing off all men because one man did something to them. And, and that's such an important thing. It's that's part of the kindness and the compassion mm -hmm. is to not judge, but to be curious yeah. and really ask questions. Um, if you feel something's a little off, I mean, one of the conversations yesterday was about men who write in a few word sentences and um, <laughs> men often do. <laughs> right. So we're going to talk about, you know, the difference in between men and women and how important it is to understand that when, when you're dating online. So, yeah, I, I love your Facebook page, by the way, ladies, you should join it. Um, the other thing, I just had a client who's um, in my private coaching and my love program, and she's getting a bunch of emails. She, we, we updated her profile. I did it for her and she's getting a lot of emails and she's actually angry. She, like she's feeling anger because men are emailing her who are like, you know, not the kind of men that she would, you know, likes. And she's actually mad at the guys that are emailing her. Um, and that's where the kindness comes in. They, you know, you have to put yourself in their shoes and just know they're actually showing kindness to you. Just be flattered and be kind back. Write them a nice email. Tell them um, thanks for your for connecting, but I'm sorry I don't see that we're a good match. Um, and don't let yourself go down the rabbit hole because, and this is what we're, what a lot of this has, what we're teaching you today, if you take our advice, it's going to keep you from going down that treacherous rabbit hole. That's the rabbit hole of what, you know, asking the whys and feeling somehow like you're not good enough because four guys wrote you that you don't think should have written you. Right. No. Yeah. So kindness to yourself and kindness to the men you meet. And Sandy, um, so let's talk about sort of what sends us down that rabbit hole a little bit. Okay, so the unrealistic expectations will send you down the rabbit hole. And I am the perfect example of the woman who had the most unrealistic expectations when I first started dating online. I would connect with a man and if, we, if I felt we were connected intellectually or we had a shared sense of humor, um, he was, he had, I don't know, he had a good job. It didn't take much because I had just gotten divorced and I was so desperate to meet a good guy that when I had those little connections, I would build a whole relationship around them. And boy, when I would meet these men, <laughs> it was always disappointing. Um, yeah, I remember one where we built up a relationship within a week. Um, he was sending me poetry by day two. And I, I was positive I was going to marry him. I mean, it was, it was obvious that we were going to get married. And I met him and it was just so horrible. It was, I couldn't even stand being in the same room with him for an hour over coffee. That's how bad it was. So I learned from that bad experience how important it is to have realistic expe expectations in online dating. And so when you expect the unreasonable, you'll either you have built the person up to be something they're not, or you'll end up feeling bad about yourself. And both of those are really not good and end up having you go down that rabbit hole. And often when you go down the rabbit hole, you say online dating doesn't work and you quit. And so that's why most people don't stay online. I have to tell you the funniest thing is that I'm actually writing my mother's profile right now. 
I forgot to tell you, Bobby. Wow. Um, my mother's husband died a year ago, and she said to me, I think I'm ready to get online. And I almost fell off my chair. So. <laughs> Um, and she's 84, and I'm going to help her get online. But I have to talk to her about having realistic expectations. Um, because yeah. she was waiting for setups, which probably will never happen. Okay, so let's talk about what to expect in real life. Um, so in online dating, you can expect that men will email you back and forth and sometimes disappear. Sometimes it feels like you're having a great conversation and they disappear. That's totally normal and you just move on. Then there are guys who email and email and email and never call and never ask you out. That's totally normal. There are men who don't respond to your emails. That happens to the majority of your emails. They go into that black hole of online dating and that's perfectly normal. And uh, somebody said, way to go, Sandy's mother. Thank you. <laughs> it's pretty hard when your daughter's a dating coach not to, uh, not to get online. No. Um, you also will get emails from scammers, um, like Bobby said. And um, I actually almost got scammed once, even though I'm very savvy. Really good looking guy. Had a whole sob story before I learned how to recognize the I'm a widower, my wife died, my whole family got killed in a car crash. Um, everything in caps, I speak a foreign language, none of his stories lined up. I mean, you get, you get used to this and you start to become more savvy. Um, you'll also go out with men who don't call you back for a second date and it's all part of the experience. Nothing is personal usually. There are sometimes things that you might've said or done that cause these things, but that's something to learn from and not beat yourself up over. Um, so that's the path of non-rejection. So when you're not looking at it as rejection, you're looking at it as a journey, as a as as an experience, and how can I learn? Then you're going to keep moving forward. You're going to stay optimistic, and you're not going to quit, and you're going to stay in on the journey until you meet that special person because he could be one person away. Uh, there are so many great stories about uh, men who showed up in somebody's inbox, a woman was about to quit, and her friend comes over and says, well, what about this guy? Why are you quitting? He looks really cute. Why don't you email him? Uh, crazy, crazy stories about women who almost gave up and then found the most amazing, amazing men. Um, there's another story about a woman. I love to tell this story. She was on OkCupid and saw that there was a man from Greenwich and she lived in Greenwich, Connecticut. So she writes to him and says, you're really cute. And, and then she sees he's from Greenwich, England. <laughs> and she goes, oh, whoops. I just <laughs> wanted to let you know that this woman across the pond thinks you're really cute. Well, he wrote her back. And they started a conversation. He ended up moving to the States for her and they got married. So she could have not sent that email because she just, she could have said to herself, well, he's, he's all the way over in England, but nothing will ever happen. So you never know, but you got to stay in it to win it. I love that. Stay in it. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, that, those unrealistic expectations, what happens is right. You get really disappointed and that makes you feel rejected um, so it, it is really important to just also stay in the present, right, Sandy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Really, really stay in the present. Yeah. And remember where you are in the process and remember what online dating is for. It's a tool to help you make connections so you could meet some good men. Yeah. And you could also meet a possible work relationship or... Yeah you could meet a man who could introduce you to the right man or, you know, there's so many, so many different possibilities. So, you know, don't fall in love with a profile or a photo like I have done in the past. Oh. Um, really important. And I think now is a good time to address the question um, that person had about the dating a few right. people at the same time. So do you want to take that Bobby? Yeah, I'd really like to, it's a really good question. So um, I'm going to read it here. So suddenly I'm emailing with three gentlemen. Good. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm not sure the best way forward. Wishing now I'd written to one at a time. I'm uneasy now as I need to say something at some time. 
and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings or be dishonest. Okay, so here's the thing about that. You're only emailing them, right? So you're just in the process. You haven't met them yet. I, I had another email that told me that she hasn't met them. Mm -hmm. um, you're, this is a, you know, when we talk about being present and we talk about expectations, right now you're in the process of emailing and that's all. So you have no connection with them. And I'm going to talk in a little bit about sort of how men see this differently. Um, they, men need to meet you. Men need to see a woman and be with her and experience how he feels with her before he can feel a connection. Whereas we, and I, I can fall in love with the profile, you know, like Sandy said, right? You can see a guy and go, oh my God, I, I think he could be the one. Um, but in the vein of remembering you don't know each other yet, um, I, you don't want to let other guys know you're emailing other guys. It's first of all, it's not their business. And second of all, it's not like you're in any kind of relationship with them. So I really want you to, I want to encourage you to stay, to have realistic expectations. Just like Sandy talked about, some of these guys are going to disappear. They're not, all the guys you email are not going to turn into dates. It's, it's a, it's hundred percent sure of that. Um, and so remember where you are in the process and just be good with where you are in the process. And you want to be connect, making connections with as many men as possible. And that means as many men as you're sort of able to manage um, time-wise, emotionally, the key is to get to the date. The key is to meet him, get, get on the phone and or get to the date. So keep emailing. I don't want you to, to uh, think of it as like you have to say, I'm sorry, I'm emailing somebody else. Um, because that's all you're doing. That's all yeah. you're doing, emailing. And I've had yeah. this happen a lot. I have a lot of women, you know, ask me about this um, because we feel a connection. And so when I hear this, uh, when I get this question, it makes me think you're feeling a connection with these guys already. And that's what we're trying. That's the key to success is not feeling that connection until you really know him, which is probably a couple of few dates in. Uh -huh. Right. And I love what you always say, Bobby, that um, the beginning of dating is for decide it is for discovering and not deciding. Right. I think that when you go in with that discovery mindset, um, it, it's just takes the heat off. It's, you don't have to decide in, in five minutes. Even in five weeks. Okay. Yes, exactly. And so yeah, so that's that that I thought was a really good question for this because it's not uncommon. I, I you know I get asked questions like this a lot. So um, be in the moment. All you're doing is emailing. So you want to email with as many as you can, but remember you want to get to the date. Get to the date so that you really can start getting to know them. Now, yes. when you're ready, when you're dating three guys at a time, um, then. I'll be happy to give you some advice on what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody yeah. wants that problem, right? Yeah. And you have a good uh, problem, by the way. I'm really proud of you for getting there. Yeah. So Anne answered um, in response to your comment, Bobby, and she said, thank you so much. They contacted me. Then suddenly things seemed confusing. I'm feeling better now, not feeling connection, but just thinking what happens when I mm -hmm. meet one. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think, Bobby, you answered. Yeah. You answered about the meeting, which is great. Well, what happens when you meet them? That's yeah. We'll 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 go there next. It's definitely mm -hmm. part of it. And then there's another question from Katie, which is a really good question. Should you go to phone or meeting? Um, should I take it first, and then you can? Uh... Oh, sure. Okay. Um, that's a really good question. It's really up to you. It's really up to you. Um, I, you know, I was online for a long time, and I used to really like a phone call or two before I met them. But eventually for me, it became much better for me to just meet as soon as possible because it's all in the meeting. I've, I've, guys don't give good phone, by the way. Most guys do not give good phone. So realistic expectations come into play there a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, uh, some guys give really good phone and you meet them and it doesn't work. So uh, you just figure out what works best for you. And... Um, and just know that ultimately it's meeting. What do you think, Sandy? Um, I agree. I used to spend way too long on the phone. That was in the, the days when I would fall in love with a profile and a phone call and a, and a photo. 
I have found that I prefer to either have a very short phone call or sometimes no phone call. And then the expectations are so much lower. Mm -hmm. The the problem is that um, you can also not vet properly um, if you don't have any real contact before. And I I went on a string of first dates that um, I probably would have preferred to have stayed home. So so you got to find your balance. Um, And Renee says, what about Skype? So um, I, I think Skype is good if you live far away. I, I think that um, I know my sister lives in Canada and a lot of the men she talks to live in New York. So until they can actually meet can be a while. So I think Skype is the next best thing to having a date. Mm-hmm. Um, but if a person lives close by, just get out there and meet for coffee. Um, why is she dating so far away? She's um, it's a good question. <laughs> she, uh, she's very religious and uh, she finds it hard to meet men who are, similar to her um, in her age bracket and her, her level of religion. Um, but it, it's very challenging. It's a great thing about online dating. Yes, is that- it is. Um, and the um, thing about Skype too, or any of this, if a man's not meeting you pr- pretty soon, if he lives by you, if he's not meeting you very soon, then it's a red flag, mm-hmm. right? I mean, if you're in different states, that's obviously one thing. But um, if you're, if he's just too busy, or he's got something going on, but oh, it's going to work out, then you need to realize he's not available for whatever reason. And again, don't go down the rabbit hole and troll and try and try to try to figure, figure it out. You don't know him. For whatever reason, um, he's not available. I think it's really important to get to that point where you just label that um, he's not available either physically, emotionally, whatever it is, you're going to drive yourself crazy trying to find him, get him to find time to squeeze you into his busy life. And then you're always, you're always feeling out of control. And, and our, our whole focus today is that this is what you're in charge of. You are in charge of so much in your dating life. So part of it is recognizing who is not available. Um, so let's talk about men um, in general. Let's talk about how to understand men talking. over 40. Um, let's yeah. talk about some of yeah. the differences. So, yes. um, um, I was going to ask, and by the way, I love your questions. Thank you yeah. so much for asking questions. Mm-hmm. And um, whatever you got, bring it on. Bring it on. And we've got an open seat. So if anybody wants to ask their question live, yeah. if you've got working hardware, <laughs> uh, I'd ask. That's like what's cool about blending, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about understanding men because men, and, you know, everything is sort of general. There's exceptions. Um, men really view online dating in a very different way than women. And I would say that they're better at it. And I want to talk to you about sort of how they view it differently and really encourage you to try to be more like them okay. in, this, in this way. I'll give you an example, okay? Um, Men, like I said earlier, most men really need to meet you, really need to be, and and by the way, that's not about like seeing you and seeing what your body looks like. And, you know, it's that's part of it for sure. They want to know if they're attracted to you. But more than that, they want to be in your presence. They want to feel what it's like to be with you. Are you fun? Do you make them feel safe? are you in, you know, is he interested? Um, all these different things that he's waiting to learn about you before he's making any kind of decision about where you might fit in his life. So basically, a, for a lot of women, we look at a profile as could he be my husband? Or could he be my lifetime partner? And that's not the way to look at it. You're only learning, you know, a few paragraphs about someone. Men do it better. Men look at the profile and they say, is she someone I could have a good time with? <clears throat> is she someone? Yes, he's going to look to see if you have some shared values. I mean, if you have something like the same lifestyle. But he's really looking at, is that someone I want to date? Is that someone I might want to get to know better? Whereas we're like, could he be my <laughs> husband? Is he somebody I could live my life with? What happens is like how this shows up in real life is we go meet him with expectations, right? And inevitably, he's going to, he's not going to be who you expect. 
it, it never happens. It goes both ways. You expect somebody that you're, it's like, when I went to meet Larry, I can tell you, I met Larry at match.com. Um, we just had our nine year um, anniversary, I had to think of that, nine year anniversary. Um, when I was driving on my way to meet him, I wasn't thinking, because I learned how to do this. I wasn't thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I think I'm gonna go meet my husband. I was thinking, oh crap. <laughs> Um, I'm going to meet this guy that like, doesn't have all my criteria. Um, but he also had some that I thought was important and we got married six months later. So it's, so, so we go, so anyway, so go, um, expecting to have a good time. Like men, they just like live as, I think, Oh, she's nice. I think I want to meet learn more about her. That's why a lot of men aren't going to want to email back and forth, email back and forth. A lot of men are going to write these like one sentences. Men communicate really differently than women and your expectations of men, you need to remember. It's like Alison Armstrong says so brilliantly, men are not hairy women. Men are not hairy women. They're not just like us with a penis. They're, they have completely different way that they think and they feel and they act and they respond and they emote. And so with that kindness comes that empathy. And we really want to help you understand them better. So don't expect like the, that they're going to respond in the same, in a way you would, you would want them to. And when they respond differently, I'll give you a really good example. So um, you write a guy and you say, um, maybe you've written back, back and forth once or twice. And um, you say something like, wow, I really love um, thus and such movies coming out and I'd love to see it, right? So you're hinting. And he writes back, oh, he writes back something that's like, oh, that'll be fun. That would be fun. But he's not asking you out, okay? That could be a guy. So I've had, I had a client this happened to him last week. You know, it's like, well, he's a sissy. He's a wuss. Why does, you know, I want him to take the lead. Oh my. <laughs> right? so, there could be a thousand things this guy's thinking, like I'm not ready to go to a movie with her. Um, I want to like meet her first and sort of get to know her or, and the movie is just an example, or he may be thinking he may be feeling insecure um, and maybe not getting the idea that you're opening it up to him. Men, um, men are different in many, many ways. Um, they, women, again, um, we kind of want to go right to it. And men just want to have a nice time till they eventually think, oh, she could be someone I could be really serious with. And I, I encourage you to be more like them. Just discover, don't decide. Discover, don't decide. That's what dating is all about. And so when a guy doesn't respond like the movie thing, when, which is just a very simple example, but when he doesn't respond the way you expect him to, don't jump to conclusions. Um, don't go down the rabbit hole really look at your communication and maybe you didn't, you weren't as direct as you needed to be because men need direct communication. Men need direct communication. Um, be succinct, be direct. Um, and, and look at things he does. Another good example of how we misunderstand um, and how our expectations get in the way and how they're different. Remember that, um, a lot of times a man's going to ask you where you want to go on your first date. And a lot, Sandy's smiling, <laughs> she knows. And a lot of women think that's because they're lazy or they're really not that interested, right? We want like a man to take charge and, you know, do, you know, and, and take the lead. Well, a lot of men ask women that because of the kind of men that feel it's really important to make the woman happy. And he's going to ask that because he really wants you to choose where to go so you can be happy, so you can feel safe. And that's why he's asking you where you want to go. There's misunderstandings between the two of us so much. So next time you jump to, you feel yourself jumping to a conclusion on how a man responds to you or doesn't respond to you, really think about um, they are different. They they process information and they process feelings so much differently. And it's about our brains. I mean, it's about how our brains work. We don't really have time to go through that, even though it's really cool yes. and fun. Yes. Um, but, but your, um, your looking at a guy, and this is the other thing too. 
this shows up. It's sort of like, you know, the question that Anne asked. The, the other way this shows up is men are going to email a bunch of women at a time. Men are like kids in a candy store. And this is why I'm saying you should be more like them. They get it. This is a tool that functions in a way that allows you to meet lots of people so that one of them could be the one. And men are just better at understanding that. So they're going to, you know, they're going to go through their inbox and they're going to talk to as many women as they can and have as many dates as they can. And eventually that's how they're going to figure out who the right person is. So if you're emailing back and forth with a guy and he doesn't get back to you in a week, it doesn't mean he's dumped you or you're emailing or you go out with a guy on a date and then you still see he's online. It doesn't mean he doesn't like you. It doesn't mean you did something wrong or he's rejecting you. It just means as a man, he's still discovering. He's still in the process, right? So chill, <laughs> chill. Remember it's a process. I want you to be more like them and just use it as a tool to meet as many people as possible and have a good time, make good choices. Like Sandy was saying, and have a good time. What do you want to add um, to that? I sort of like went all over the place. Well, there's but so much I was thinking. Well, there's, of. there's so much I'm trying to like cut it down, but I'm feeling like I'm not hitting some really good stuff. No, you hit a lot of great points. I think that the other thing that we really provide for men is, is a place for them to share emotions like they don't do in their everyday life. And I think that's why a lot of men just start spe spilling everything right away. Um, <laughs> And, you know, I'm, I'm a dating coach, so I, I, I know how to connect with people. And I think men feel that sense of trust and safety right away with me. And I mean, this guy last night was telling me about his wife having an affair, his last ex-girlfriend and, and the things that she said to him. I mean, I kept trying to interrupt him and he told me about his cancer. I mean, it was like, whoa, way too much information. I don't want to know all this, but he felt... I think that I, I need to tell you everything so that you will choose me. You know, it was almost like he was selling himself like a used car. And um, he actually said, I have some good mileage left. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, women have to understand because this, this topic comes up a lot where men just talk and talk and talk and, and they feel like they're, they're talking to somebody who's self-centered. And again, that's an assumption some some men are self-centered i've definitely dated those but but then there are others who are just nervous and who want who really would would benefit from you interrupting him and bobby you have a great story of of a woman who interrupted and the man thanked her and he was so happy because he just couldn't stop talking and you know if you do it kindly and you that word kindness and compassion comes back again then it it works um so we have a couple of questions um I love this. It's yeah. great feedback. Um, so here's from Catherine. After figuring out that an email pen pal is not going to be available, do you recommend emailing to say you've decided to discontinue the connection? If so, do you say why or simply say, I don't think we're a match? Or is it better to sim simply stop sending emails? I think generally when a man's not available, he stops emailing. <laughs> I don't think it's usually... Um, really you know something that you need to take care of but if you feel that he's on again off again he's showing you signs of um, unavailability i would just say uh, i would probably just say i don't think we're a good match um and, and maybe just wait until he asks you out you know or something but it, usually with guys like that they don't they don't get around to asking you out or they're not consistent um, I don't, I don't like ghosting, you know, disappearing. I think if there's a, it's a real culture in online dating that people just disappear. And I think, um, I really recommend that you have the courage to speak your truth. And I wouldn't go into details about why the whys just end up being an argument, but I, I'm not really that way. I don't know, Bobby, what do you have to say? Um, I think that I, I do think there's some, it's a red flag when a man's only emailing and not asking you out for sure. Um, and again, we don't, don't need to figure out why. Um, however, there are some guys um, who might, there might be a reason. So I would say you, I would say that if you, you need to tell him, um, I'm enjoying our emails, but I'm here to meet people. 
and ask him if he'd like to meet. I mean, when it gets to the point where you're emailing back and forth, then you you want to just put it on the table, speak your truth. Like Sandy says, um, I'm really, say something positive. I'm really enjoying our emails, um, though I'm here to meet people. That's my goal. Um, do you see that happening? And give him a chance to say um, yes or no. He'll probably say no or disappear, right? So if he's emailing because he's married or because he lives in, you know, another country or whatever, he'll disappear. Um, but give him a chance. Maybe he's shy. Maybe he's just super busy right now. Give him a chance. But um, the answer back needs to be, yeah, let's meet Thursday at five o'clock. Right. Right. The answer back can't be, well, here's my story, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Um, and then when someone's not a match, I don't believe that you should give them the reasons what happens is sometimes we're because we are so afraid of hurting a guy's feelings or a person's feelings. We'll be like, "You're really nice," but blah blah. blah. And then they, I've had, you know, then they're gonna be like, "Well, if I'm really right, nice, then why don't you go out with me?" Okay, right. Right. So don't don't waste your energy, your emotional energy, or his. Yeah, I don't think that it it's beneficial to explain. Um, yeah. So we have uh, plan and adventure says we don't like the stress of dating and feeling like there's a checkbox criteria to fulfill on a date. We want to meet, learn about you and assess compatibility without the burden of feeling like a test. I'm so yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. And, and I think that people often uh, show that the, the testing um, in so many ways, and one is body language. Um, it, you know, crossing your arms and, and just waiting for the person to fail the test, um, looking for evidence that the person is exactly like the last person who hurt you. Um, I actually had a client whose boyfriend said, I'm not the person who hurt you. I am this boyfriend here sitting in front of you. You know, it, it's so easy to forget that. Um, and so really coming in, and again, that's why it's so important to do the inner work of really cleaning out who you are and getting your triggers handled because if you're triggered about everything that a man is saying and you're looking for, oh, he's going to probably cheat on me because the last guy cheated on me, then you're just going to find more of that. Um, so I'm going to bring a clipboard and checklist on my next date and make sure I get all my boxes ticked. <laughs> Aha, Renee, <laughs> you're funny. Um, okay, so Rachel said, I heard Patty Stanger, the millionaire matchmaker, say for first dates, coffee's cheap, drinks are an audition. Lunch is an interview, dinner is romance. What do you think about that? That's um, a lovely concept. And <laughs> um, I think that we're not talking about a date. We're talking about meeting. Yes. Meeting. And I think for first meetings, coffee is great. So is a cup of water. So is, you know, sitting on a park bench. Um, you know, meeting somebody, it doesn't really matter where. Um, Drinking, I'm not a big fan of drinking alcohol on a date. I think that um, there are many people who want to meet for drinks. I often will say I prefer meeting for coffee. Or if I go out to a place where they're serving alcohol, I will get something that's not alcoholic or, you know, maybe a glass of wine. But you got to be careful about people drinking too much on a date. Um, People can get a little carried away, and it's actually good. It's a really good, um, good way to assess whether a person is compatible with you. Because if they are heavy drinkers, then you're going to know that right away um, if they're drinking a lot on a date. So um, dinner's lovely, but then there's a lot of pressure in going out for a fancy dinner on a first date. And um, right. what if you don't like being with them for half an hour? You know, what if you can't wait for the date to end? And the, the other thing is that if you start out with coffee, it could turn into appetizers and it could turn into something. Um, but I, I like the idea of leaving some mystery for the next time you get together. That's good. Um, <laughs> I would say, though, I would say if you go... On, a, on your first date, you want to go somewhere that's quiet where you can talk. So a lot of times people choose like a Starbucks kind of place. Um, I want you to go somewhere quiet. Well, I should say quiet where you should talk, where you can talk and where you are served. So instead of going to Starbucks where there's like a zillion people buzzing around and, you know, 
mixers and blenders and all that stuff. Go to a coffee shop, go to the lounge, of, like of a restaurant, maybe. Or a um, hotel. Because, or a, ho a hotel. Or because then not only do you get that sort of time to really settle and some sort of a peaceful environment, but you also get the benefit of seeing how he interacts with other people. So if you get served, he or she, so if you get served, then you get to see how they are with the wait staff, you get to see how they are with the hostess, that kind of thing. Um, so that's like a really nice um, sort of extra little um, tidbit. The other thing is, I personally, um, by the way, I went, at, I went to Disneyland once on a first date. Yeah, don't ever do that. <laughs> It was like the worst of all. I dated for like 30 years. I was like, like one of the worst, worst days of my life. Like Sandy, you're saying, you know, what if you don't like them? Um, anyway, so wh whether it's lunch or dinner or whatever, just do go somewhere quiet. Um, and remember, it's a meet date. It's not a date. You're only meeting. And this is how men look at it, too, especially. Um, and you could check me. Um, check me on this, you guys. Um, like Planet Adventure, you can let me know. Men really do look at it as, I'm going to meet her and decide if I want to date her. I'm going to meet her and decide if I want to go out on a date with her. So ladies, I, I really encourage you to approach it as the same way. We're just going to meet, spend some time together, and then decide if we want to go out on a real date. So if he's not like doing everything for you on that first date, like like going out of his way to knock your socks off, just remember they could be looking at it a little differently. Um, and just go and have fun, help him get to know you. And um, that way you could both make a decision about whether you want to see each other again. That's what it's, that's what that meet date's all about. Yep. We need to have another blab about what to do on that first meet date to help oh, him get yeah. to know you. We ha we actually, Bobby and I have a whole program called Ace the Date um, mm -hmm. that is all about what to do on a first date so that you really, really get to know each other. Because often people walk away from a first date with no real un understanding of the other person and they don't know how to do it where it's not an interview. Um, yeah. So, I mean, even a first phone call can be so informative if you ask the right kinds of questions. Um, we have a question here from Mira Wonder, and also Rachel said that she was 15. She also went to Disney Disneyland on a on the first day that she was 15 years old. That's cute. <laughs> um, oh my so God. Mira I Wonder wants to know how long you were online dating before meeting your ex. Okay, I'm going to answer that real quick because I know yes. we're running out of time. But I just have to say, this guy that I went to Disneyland with, I mean, just saying, okay, his he was a large guy, and he had a sweater around his neck like a you know, they like used a to yuppie, do in the old yuppie days. thing. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that. Um, he had a sweater around his neck, and he was like, "Getting," he goes, "I'm getting hot," <laughs> <laughs> and he went to try to tie it around his stomach, but he couldn't because he was so big, and he handed it to me <laughs> and said, "Can you hold this for me?" That's just an example. Um, okay, um, I was online. <laughs> I was online. By the way, the reason I went out with him is because I thought he was wealthy. That was a long time ago. That's when I thought, wow, I, I want the opportunity to go out with it. <laughs> How you choose who you meet needs to be much deeper yeah. than that. Um, did I tie it around my shoulders? Uh, I did carry it. Oh, my goodness. Uh. Um, I, I was online on and off for like seven years. Um, and when I met Larry, it was about six months before I started really working on, you know, how the hell do I do this in the right way? So I completely redid my photos. I got professional photos. I completely redid my profile. I did what you're all doing now. I was learning how to do it the right way. And within six months, I, I met Larry. So um, he never would have chosen me. He was online before I had done all this. So, and he wasn't choosing me. So it really makes a huge difference to be doing it the right way. And if I wasn't doing it, if I wasn't following what we're teaching you today, and just being emotionally ready and so forth, I wouldn't have been on, I, I never would have met him because I would have gone offline, you know, quite some time before that. Yeah. All right, I want to recap what we talked about today. So let us talk about what we discussed. So we started out talking about the number one key to online dating success, and that is knowing that it can be a challenging experience experience and knowing that you are in charge. 
more than you think you are in charge. Online dating is also the best tool to help you connect with men that you'd otherwise never have a chance to meet in person. And you don't use it to get to know men. That's what dating is for. So that's an important distinction. Then um, we talked about the scary stuff. There are some scary guys out there and you don't have to go out with them, play with them, talk to them. It is your choice. And the more you know about the scary stuff, the better you'll get at picking the better guys. There's also no such thing as online rejection. These men do not know you. They can't possibly be rejecting you. So you have to say the magic word, which is next. <laughs> And then the next thing we talked about was kindness. You need to show yourself kindness and show the men that you connect with kindness. And that will ensure that you have a much, much healthier, better experience. And then you have to have realistic expectations. You stay in the moment, stay present. Do not expect men to act like you would act. So understanding men, we talk so much about understanding men and the differences between men and women and how we communicate. And um, manage your emotions. You need to manage your emotions. So, so important. And then rinse and repeat. <laughs> so do not quit when you have a bad date. Do not quit when you meet a crazy guy. Do not quit when you had, you know, nothing happening for a little while. Figure out what you need to do to improve your online dating experience and just keep doing it. Rinse and repeat. And I wanted to let you guys know something just went live today. Um, so thank you, Bobby, for putting my website up there, lastfirstdate.com. If you go there, you can do a few things. You can join my new online dating course. Um, I actually made a do-it-yourself course with live Q&A, and it starts on January 17th, and the price is way, way reduced from the regular course. So if you've ever thought about really getting some hand-holding through the online dating process, I would love to help you. Um, you can also sign up for my free gift, which is um, the top three mistakes that online daters make and how you can turn them around to find love. And that is, there's a little place to fill that out pretty much everywhere on my website. And all the women in this group, if you're not already part of my group um, on Facebook, please join me at your last first date. And I'll put the, I'll put the address in the message bar. And Bobby, you? Uh, so <laughs> that was a lot of really good stuff. Um, so yeah, I for just, I'm so glad y'all joined us and I want to respond to, um, uh, this blab was excellent. I learned a lot. Please do it every week. Um, we're actually going to be doing another one in January. We'll let you know, but we're going to be doing it at least once a month. So the first Thursday of every month. So the next one is February 4th. Um, Sandy and I will be together again. Um, and we will be blabbing on a regular basis. So, um, put that on your calendar the first Thursday of every month at 12 noon Pacific time. Yay. Um, okay. I know I, I love it. So for me, I want to offer you, um, my website of course is date like a grown up.com. And I'd love for you to join me on my Facebook page at, um, facebook.com slash date like a grown up. Um, and I'd also like to offer you a, an ebook. It's called 20 secrets to successful online dating for grown up women. Um, so I really do stress the idea that we do have some unique challenges as, you know, women, um, who are later in life. Um, I was married for the first time I was married. I married Larry at 47. So I'm quite familiar with some of those challenges and these 20 secrets are very much, um, focused on what you need to do as a woman of your age, because it's different for you than the 25 year olds, a 25 year old throws up a profile, boom, she gets a lot of, you know, incoming, but honestly that won't happen for you. Um, so 20 secrets to su successful online dating for grown up women. The best way to get this, I want you to email me. I'm going to put my email down here, Bobby P at date, like a grown up.com. I don't know why, but I can't type and talk at the same time. Apparently. Um, <laughs> Me, please at Bobby P at date like a grown B O B B I P at date like a grown up.com. And in the subject line, just say, man, you know, give me your book. 
um, and I will get that book to you right away this afternoon. Um, it's really um, the best. Um, it's just like we're talking about today, really clear, succinct, simple tips for you, do's and don'ts. So you can really enjoy your online dating experience and connect with, with good quality men who have good potential. They exist. Yeah. They're out there, guys. <clears throat> they do. They do. Thank okay. You. So remember, join us again um, February 4th. Put on your calendar. Um, we'll be. We'll be. We'll be. That's up. right. Um, and remember to really know that you are in charge of not just your online dating experience, but your entire dating and romantic experience. And we're just going to keep helping you learn. Um, more and more about yourself, about men, so that you can really embody that and have a great time with it. Yay. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone. Have Thanks a great so much. Day. Bye.